and it's still kind of warm out. It's got down to like 45 at night, 60s to maybe 70s during the day. So it's really not too much autumn though. There's a sort of a cool breeze in the wind. Um, and uh, well, fall festivals are popping up all over Still River. Uh, Methodist Church up on the hill got its trailer truck full of pumpkins in and their pumpkin fun fest is going to be starting in about two weeks and uh, pumpkin sale and uh, it's about the time when only time when everybody comes to the church including the kids is during the pumpkin festival uh, the rest of the time it's the hardliners. I had a friend who uh, was sort of uh, disabled and his mother took him to church. He liked to go, especially to sing. And he would call it the, Met, call it the metric church. He said, Dave, I'm going to the metric church this Sunday. I said, well, they're, they're Methodists are sort of Anglican and you know, they might as well go over to the metric system anyway. And, um, <clears throat> well, kids are getting ready for Halloween. The masks and costumes are all out, and they look pretty cheesy compared to long ago in Still River when we made our own. And, uh, well, it's time for the scary story. Way back when... Still River has this huge cemetery in the middle of it. And the hospital is right next to the one end of the cemetery, which doesn't give a very hopeful view to patients looking out the window. I remember being in the hospital after getting hit by a car and coming back from the dead, so to speak. And uh, the first thing I saw was looking out the window was the cemetery. And uh, call it Worcester Cemetery. It's huge. Some old nun who came to Danbury, she was, the first thing she noticed was the cemetery. She go, and she said, well, Still River is about exci exciting as a, as a graveyard with lights. That's what she called Still River. And, uh, well, anyway, the night before, Halloween mischief night. We had a sort of a kind of a loose gang. We weren't really a gang. We just hung out together. There's about six or seven of us. And uh, we went up to the cemetery because uh, a deer went out to the group of who was going to walk through the cemetery uh, on Halloween night. And uh, so about dusk, it was the first really frost out and chill. We went up to one end of the cemetery, which was huge. It had a big statue of uh, General Worcester there, uh, his graves there. And it, it's a statue of him being shot off his horse. I don't know why that is, but it seems as all the... American Revolutionary uh, monuments always have a famous general being shot off his horse, their horse. I don't know why that is, but. Um, so we're there at the entrance to the cemetery, and there's like this low cloud of greenish, sick looking fog. Just like the horror movies, about four feet off the ground. Through, about two to four feet off the ground this layer and up through the top the layer stuck monuments and some of the monuments were kind of the gravestones are kind of odd shaped and if you stood there long enough it looked like they were moving they were people banshees or ghosts moving across the top of the mist and there was this creepy noises coming out of there, like groans, grunts, 
squeaks and yawls and things like that. So we're standing there. And who's going to walk through? Well, we had this fellow in our group called George. He was like 16. We were all like 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. But he kind of, you know, 16 was the line to adulthood. That's when you got your driver's license. And uh, he uh, kind of didn't make it. He didn't get his license. He was kind of, I don't know, he was a little bit slow. He didn't make it over the line yet. So being 16 in our group was being on the top of the pecking order, top of the pile. Whereas if he went to the older group, he'd be way on the bottom in status, you know. And uh, he liked being on the top. It made him feel good. On the top of the pile. The top of the steaming pile. And uh, <clears throat> he, uh, he came up and he... Back in those days, you wore blue jeans that were like unfaded, stiff, and dark blue with a big belt. They call it a garrison belt. And usually a t-shirt, usually white, with a pack of cigarettes, usually Lucky Strikes, rolled up in one arm. You know, the kind you would see on the, the movie Grease. And uh, it was those days. And George was kind of... He had to take the leader role, being on the top of the steaming pile. And uh, we're betting five bucks who would walk through that cemetery. And uh, George stepped up because he had to. And uh, he's kind of combing his hair back, acting real cool. And he's there. Uh, Yo, you... Uh, you pansies, what's the matter? You afraid to take the bet? Is this no problem? Piece of cake. And he starts walking and sauntering and really smoking a cigarette, blowing smoke in the air. And he gets about 50 feet in, and the creaky noises and the moving uh, gravestones and ghosts start moving. And there's like eerie noises, and you can't see below your. Uh, almost chest level. You're walking through this thick greenish gray murk and uh, things get really quiet and creaky and creepy and there's hoots and yowls and squeaks and grunts and George starts walking a little slower and you know how you get that creepy feeling the hair on the back of your neck starts standing up this chill is going through you. You start to feel it shaking. And you hear, you feel your hair starting to stand up. And your eyes get wide. And he's walking and he gets real slow. Drops his cigarette. And kind of puts his hands down to his side. And he's slowly walking along now. Well, that afternoon about 4.30 or 5. A nuke de bum who worked on the graveyard crew was finishing off a grave. He had like this wooden like five or six step staircase he would lower down by a rope into the grave after it got dug. And he would climb down and you have to finish the inside of the grave off. You have to use water and uh, cement uh, trawls and things like that and a shovel and a rake and, and smooth off the walls and the bottom and make it nice and even and uh, square it off and smooth. You had to smooth it off with the water and the, the cement trawl. And uh, Nuke was kind of pretty much always half in the bag. You know, they he would get tested it would be for blood levels not alcohol levels because the alcohol you would see if there was any blood in the alcohol basically and he took like a couple sips off his bottle he had in his back pocket of his uh, overalls and he was finishing it off 
and he kind of was more than, than a half in the bag. He's pretty well schnockered out, and uh, he sat down and snoozed off and uh, slumped over on the, on the stairs, the wooden staircase he lowered down. And, uh, well, he's still down there, and he's snoring, but the snore is like this horrible kind of grunt, growl snore, like, bleh, bleh. well, George is walking along even slower, and he's, like, starting to uh, have second thoughts, and he's bumping into stones, and he's turning around every two because there's like these noises all over these grunts, squeaks, yowls, hoot owls, or whatever. And he's walking along real slow. And he hears this grunt and groan like he turns around looking back and he trips. Well, he tripped right at the edge of the open grave where Nuke the Bum was sleeping and uh, or schnocked out. And uh, he lands on top of Nuke. Nuke wakes up with George on top of him, grunts and groans and yowls and screams. And George, out of pure adrenaline, just kind of jumps right out of the grave to the top and runs back out of the graveyard. We're standing there. We hear these awful noises and screams. We see him come running towards us. We don't even know. It didn't even look like him. His hair sticking up. It's this white figure with a white face with eyes as big as silver dollars. Hair sticking straight up. Screaming, running past us. And we're like, whoa, what was that? Uh, we didn't see George for like two months to like almost New Year's uh, after that incident. So we looked at each other, and we said, well, who's going to win the fight out? Who's going next? And uh, we all turned and looked at each other and walked back home. And that's the scary story.